In order to build a smart home, you need your smart home to understand what is happening in your life, not just what is happening in your home. And while you could solve that coding all of that context with input millions, sensors, and scripts, not everyone wants to spend their nights doing that. But if you're like my family, a good source of that information is already in a calendar. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to link your calendar with Home Assistant. So stick around because we're going to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. If you're like me, your calendar is full of juicy context about your life. Stuff like appointments, birthdays, school schedules, holidays, and even maybe some reoccurring things like chores. Context that could be used to trigger automations in Home Assistant, or just simply to be included in a notification to let you know what's going on so you don't have to go looking for that information. Which is something we've talked a lot about in recent videos. But getting that data into your smart home platform isn't always easy and may be impossible. In fact, if you're using the Amazon Echo, Google Home, Apple HomeKit, or SmartThings as the foundation of your smart home, I don't think you can trigger automations using your calendar events. Home Assistant, however, has a handful of integrations that can do just that. For this video, I'm going to focus on the Google Calendar because I think it's pretty widely used. It's also free and easy to set up, and the Home Assistant integration works pretty well. While the Home Assistant documentation has everything you need to get started with this integration, I struggled with making it usable for my use cases. So with this video, I hope to be able to help you shortcut the boring stuff and skip straight to the automations. I've broken this how-to into four parts. First, we're going to get the Google API credentials we need to make this integration work. Second, we're going to set up the integration in Home Assistant. Third, we're going to configure the integration so you can actually use it. And four, I'm gonna share how I use the Google Calendar in my Home Assistant setup to give you an idea of what you could do with this newfound awareness that your smart home platform is going to have. So let's get to it. For this video, I'm going to assume that you already have a Google Calendar set up. If you don't already have one, I suggest creating a Google account for your house. It's free and the calendar can be integrated easily into your life. Plus, you can use the account for signing up for all of those smart home services for those appliances in your house that aren't going to move when you sell your house. Then you can just hand over the account to the new owners. For this how-to, I'm using my Slacker Labs demo account. And if you're concerned about cost, don't worry, this API is free to use as of this video. Over on home-assistant.io slash integrations slash Google, you can find a list of steps walking you through getting access to the Google Calendar API. But if you don't want to read, don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it step by step. First, we need to head over to the Google Developers Console by clicking this link in step one. Log in with your Google account. And if this is the first time you're here, you will get this little welcome message. Pick your country and agree to the terms. Now we need to select a project. For first timers, you'll have to create a project. This project is going to be what you link your API credentials to. So click new project in the upper right of this window. Now we need to give this project a name. This can be whatever you want. The only time you'll use this project name is when you come into this console. I can't remember if this name has to be unique across all of Google or just what's in your list. Either way, for this demo, I just left it as the one Google gave me. Then click create. Next, I went to API and services and clicked credentials. But before we do that, I wanna go ahead and enable the calendar API. So I headed to APIs and services in the menu on the left. This is where you would see some graphs to show your Google API usage. Since I haven't used this account, all of mine are blank. So let's enable one. Click the enable API and services at the top. Here we'll search for calendar. You should get the Google Calendar API in the results. Click on it and then click enable. Once enabled, you should have a link to credentials on the left again, so let's head there. Way over on the right is a configure consent screen button, and this is where we need to go next. For user type, choose external since Home Assistant will be the user of this API, and click create. For app name, you can put Home Assistant. For user support email, choose your Google email. Then scroll down to the developer contact information section and enter the same Google email which I think means you're now officially a developer and you didn't even have to write a single line of code. Anyway, now hit save and continue so we can move on. Scopes, we don't need no stinking scopes. So hit save and continue. Test users, you do need, so click add users. Enter your email. 
Click Add, then Add again, then Save and Continue. And we're finally at the summary. Now it's time to create our credentials. So click Create Credentials at the top and choose OAuth Client ID. Application type is TV and Limited Input Device. For name, use Home Assistant Credentials, then click Create. Now, just fair warning, these credentials on the screen have already been destroyed, so don't bother trying to copy them. But you should grab yours before you leave the screen. I always download the JSON so I have a digital copy. But then I just copy the client ID and the secret and store them for later. Then for one final check, let's just make sure that the Google Calendar API is enabled. Head to Library, search for Calendar, click on Google Calendar API, and you should see that it is enabled. If it's not, be sure to click Enable now. Okay, before we can get to the fun stuff, I need to make a quick stop at the Google Calendar. Because since this is a demo account, I don't have any live data on my calendar. So for the purposes of this video, I added some. Here I have added some events just so I could show you an example of how this integration works. And I did three different types. I have a full day event called Skylar's Birthday. In the description, I added hashtag birthday. These hashtags are going to help us get around some of the issues with this calendar integration, which I'll explain in the configuring the calendar section of this video. Then I have one from 9 to 10.30 p.m. labeled recording time. This one has hashtag event in the description. Then one called bedtime. Here I added double exclamation point dash zero one colon zero zero to the title. And I set the time from 11 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. And hashtag special in the description. The double exclamation sets an offset, which helps in triggering reminders before an actual event starts. So in this case, even though the event starts at 11 p.m., we'll be able to use that offset attribute to trigger an automation one hour earlier to make sure that we know it's time to wind it down. Hopefully, in a bit, this will make more sense. But you're not limited to just events. Any calendar that you add to this Google Calendar can be leveraged as well. For example, we'll be able to use these holidays in the United States, so Home Assistant knows the major holidays. And one of my favorites for adding a little fun is the National Holiday Calendar. I put a link in the description to natdaycal.wordpress.com if you want more information about the national holiday calendar I use. Whatever you do, do not go to natdaycal.com as listed on this site. A porn ad site lives there now. Which, pro tip, don't forget to renew your domain names. Anyway, here we can scroll down and grab this link in the middle of the page. In Google Calendar, click Add Calendar, choose URL, and paste in the URL. Then click Add Calendar. And there we are. I think we have enough events that we can jump into Home Assistant and enable this integration. Okay, if you've made it this far, what's left should be pretty easy. But we are going to have to edit some YAML because as of this video, setting up this Google Calendar integration and configuring it isn't possible through the UI. So for this part of the journey, we're going to need three things. A Home Assistant instance, a way to edit our YAML files, and those credentials we copied from the Google Developer Console. Okay, this is a brand new instance of Home Assistant running on a Raspberry Pi 4. I went ahead and installed the file editor add-on, which we're going to need. If you want to know how to install it or how to set up access via Samba, click the link in the description to a video I did walking you through setting up access to your Home Assistant files. First thing we need to do is get our credentials into Home Assistant. I'm going to use the secrets.yaml file, which is a good habit to get into. Here we're going to add two lines. The first one I called Google underscore client underscore ID, then colon, and paste in the client ID we saved from the developer console. Next, Google underscore client underscore secret colon, and then the secret we saved. The first part of those lines is how we're going to refer to these secrets. Save those changes and then head to the configuration.yaml file. Here we're going to add Google colon and on the next line indent at least two spaces and type client underscore ID colon, then space exclamation secret, all one word, space Google underscore client underscore ID. Then the next line client underscore secret colon, followed by space exclamation secret all one word, space, Google, underscore, client, underscore, secret. Now we can save that and restart Home Assistant. 
When your system comes back up, you'll get a notification to authorize the access to the API. So copy the code presented in your message and click the link. Enter the code in the form, then log in using the same Gmail account you created the credentials under. Then click Allow. When you see Success, you can close this window. Back in Home Assistant, you'll see a message that Google underscore calendars .yaml has been added. So let's head over to that file. And since this integration pulls down the calendars it finds, it's already populated with the data we need. Okay, let's restart. While my demo instance is restarting, this is a good time to mention that if you make any changes to this Google Calendars YAML file, you're going to need to restart Home Assistant. Home Assistant only reads the information in this file when it starts up. But if you're making changes on your Google Calendar, like adding events or modifying existing events, you don't have to restart your Home Assistant instance each time. The integration will refresh throughout the day to keep Home Assistant up to date. Okay, my demo instance should be back up. If we head over to Developer Tools and States, you will see that some new calendar entities have been added. One for each calendar, in fact. And these entities are essentially binary sensors. They're either on or off. Here we have a calendar.birthdays, which is pointed to the contact calendar. One for holidays in the United States. And we have our national day calendar. And lastly, our main one tied to the account. Each of these calendars has some common attributes a message, which is the calendar event title. They have an all day attribute that's either true or false. And they have a start time and an end time. Location, if it was entered in our event in the calendar the description, and an offset underscore reached attribute, which is also true or false. And then of course, friendly name. So if you haven't already spotted what's wrong with all of this, let me show you. If you remember, we have three events today. Currently, as I record this, it's a little past 10 p.m., so I should have my recording time event showing, but I don't. That's because for this calendar, only one event can be on, and until that event is off, no other events will appear in this entity. And since we have a full day event, it's not going to show anything else. And that is where those hashtags come in handy. So let's jump back into the Google Calendar YAML file and make some changes. Under our main calendar at the top, we're going to create some new entities for each of those hashtags, which is essentially going to create a new calendar entity for each of them. So for the first one, device ID here is going to be entity name. So for the first one, I called it birthdays. Name will be birthdays, track will be true, and search will be our hashtag birthday in quotes, which is what we'll use in the description of all of our birthday calendar events. Next, I made one called slacker labs underscore events. And for search, I'm using hashtag event. And I made one for reminders, which I used the hashtag special as the search string. For the seasoned Home Assistant users out there, you may notice that there's a conflict in this file. Because as of right now, I have two device IDs in this file called birthdays. Typically, I change the contact calendar entry in this file to contacts for the device ID, like I did in the name, because I use my hashtags instead of my Google contact list for my birthdays. But I wanted to show you what happens when you have two with the same device ID. Okay, now that we have all of this set up, let's restart. And when things come back up, let's jump back into the developer tools and states and scroll down to our calendar entities. As you can see, we have quite a few more entities now. Our calendar birthdays is now seeing the birthday and you can see that in the description, it has our hashtag. It's currently on because this all day event, of course, has already started. Then we have a calendar entity for holidays. It's off, but we can see that the next holiday is the first day of Women's History Month on March 1st. And our national holiday calendar. Today is National Pistachio Day, which is a very popular holiday in pistachio circles, I assume. For reminders, you can see that it's off because my bedtime event doesn't start for another 40 minutes. But since I used those double exclamations to set an offset in the title, our offset reached attribute is true. Slacker Labs events is on because we're in the middle of recording time, which is what we're doing right now. And perhaps you already noticed that we don't have a calendar.birthday2 entity that you might have expected when two device IDs as birthdays are used. That's because this integration creates the entities from the top down 
and ignores the duplicate device IDs instead of creating a numbered variation. But it doesn't go completely ignored. You do get a nice error in your log. As you can see, we went from having a single event to being able to see all three of my events in the day, which makes this way more useful. And without those hashtags, anyone who has overlapping events in their day isn't going to find this integration all that useful right out of the box. I suggest looking at the different types of events you want Home Assistant to be aware of, and then breaking each one of those groups out with their own hashtag. Then as you add those events to your calendar, you can just add the hashtag to the description. In my use case, I have hashtags for birthdays, for holidays that we celebrate in this house like May 4th, for the school schedule and events, and one for just generic events. But you can add as many or as few as you need for your use case. Speaking of use cases, let's talk about how I use these calendar entities. One way, of course, is notifying us when our kid has an event starting soon. For this, I have events on the calendar with an offset set to the appropriate reminder time. Then the trigger is when the calendar Skylar events has the attribute offset reached go to true. Then I send out a notification. I use the Anchorage House Holidays counter for things like triggering events on Rex Manning Day because we quote Empire Records a lot in this house. Damn the man, save the empire. I use the holiday calendar to tell my house to send out a tweet on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, which, if you didn't know, you can follow my house on Twitter at Anchorage House 2 if you want, and the birthday calendar to trigger a tweet on my kid's birthday. Then in my daily briefing, we get a rundown of holidays and national holidays, just to keep us aware of what's going on. The beauty of this integration, though, is that you can use it for both triggering automations and you can use the attributes to give you information, like when the next event for each calendar is. And of course, you can see all of the events on your Home Assistant calendar by clicking the calendar link in the left menu. Oh, sweet. National Oreo Cookie Day is coming up in a couple of weeks. I should make sure we have some in the pantry. Anyway, hopefully this video has shown you how useful the Google Calendar integration is with Home Assistant. About the only thing that would make this integration easier is to have a way to see all of the events that start on a particular day. That way you could send out an agenda first thing in the morning or throughout the day to remind you of events that are coming up. My brother solved that particular shortcoming using Node-RED, but I haven't jumped in on Node-RED yet, so we're going to have to save that topic for another video. If you want to help Slacker Labs and the mission to help you automate the boring stuff, you can find affiliate links as well as links to buy me a coffee and to the official Slacker Labs t-shirt store in the description. Or simply let me know you found value in this video by hitting that like button. And consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your smart home projects to watch mine. Until next time, automate the boring stuff.